Welcome to Statistical Inference for Estimation in Data Science. My name is Jem Corcoran, and I will be your guide for the magical journey ahead. Magical! At the filming of this video, the United States is going through some pretty big elections. And what we're seeing is that the results are not really matching what was expected based on polling data. So what is a poll? A poll is when a person or organization goes out into the world and they randomly select people from a large population that they care about and they form a group or sample. And they study that sample to try to figure out what the larger population wants. This is inference. Drawing conclusions about a larger population based on a relatively small sample. Now it's not as easy as saying 30% of the people in my sample like candidate A and therefore 30% in the population must like candidate A. Statistical inference uses theory and formal arguments to draw conclusions about that population in a way that takes into account the uncertainty that comes from only looking at a small and randomly selected sample. In this course, we're going to be making a lot of assumptions about our larger population. It's going to be pretty idealized. Now, real life is messy, real life violates assumptions, and real life is rarely ideal. But being able to do statistical inference in these idealized situations is a stepping stone to dealing with more realistic data. This module is about point estimation. We're going to try to be estimating a quantity of interest out there in the larger population, and we're going to look at the sample and do some calculations and return a value or point. Now, you wouldn't be alone in thinking, should I really just be returning a point? or maybe I should return a whole interval of values representing some error, a little plus or minus action around that point. And you'd be right, that is what you should do, but it starts with a point, building blocks. So I know there's a burning question on all of your minds right now, and that is, what is the average height of all adult males in France? I sent a crack team of TAs out to the streets of France with a measuring tape, and I had them randomly select 10 people and measure their height in inches, which probably upset a lot of people because the TAs are not using the metric system, but I digress. Now, I'm assuming that the measurements have infinite accuracy, so I'm not stuck with rounding off to the nearest inch or the nearest tenth of an inch or the nearest half of an inch or whatever. I can go to as many decimal places as I want. Now, I took those 10 heights that they measured and recorded and I made a histogram. So what you're seeing on the horizontal axis is a bunch of heights in inches that have been grouped up into intervals or bins. And it's not important right now how I chose to group them up. I just grouped them up in some way. And what you're seeing on the vertical axis, well, this could be counts. It could be that if you have two people in a particular bin, the bar goes up to a height of two. But that's not what's happening here. And it could be relative frequency. And that would mean that the bar corresponding to a particular bin will go up to a number representing the proportion of people that you saw in that bin. But that's not what it is either. In this instance, you're seeing something known as density on the y-axis. And this is a number such that the total area of each bar is going to represent the proportion of people in your sample that you saw in the corresponding bin. Now, this isn't a lot of data, so let's kick it up a notch. This histogram is starting to take on the shape of a bell curve. And in fact, I know an exact representation for this curve. This represents perfect information. It's not really what you would have if you had the entire population. It's a little more than that. It's a model for the idealized population. So it tells us how the heights are distributed. Most of them are here, less of them are here, and here. 
we never have this much data or rarely have this much data. So let's bring it down a bit. Okay, we're down to a sample of size 100. Because of the symmetry of the bell curve, it appears that the true average height of all adult males in France is about here. We're going to call it mu, which is a very common uh, notation for an average in an ideal population as opposed to a sample average or sample mean. In fact, if I take many samples of size 100 and compute the sample mean or average for each, then these sample means, which are denoted by x bar, which is just an average in your sample, these are going to pile up in a certain way. They have a certain chance of being over here and a certain chance of being, say, over here and, say, over here. And we're interested in the shape of this sampling distribution so that when we estimate the true mean mu with x bar computed from a single sample, we can make certain claims about our accuracy. There are many more quantities of interest about the entire population that might be of interest to us. And there are many more common, often recurring shapes that we might see out there if we're measuring something different. So next up, we're going to talk about some of these common shapes. I'm so glad you decided to take this course. I think we're going to have a lot of fun together, and I will see you in the next lesson. Magical!